Hello and welcome back to Scout Report, where today we'll look at newly minted Juventus manager Maurizio Sarri and the challenges he'll face on his return to Italy. But before we jump in, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you never miss a video. Let's get into it. 5. Change the style Just a year after he was charged with turning Chelsea from a dogged hard-to-beat defensive side into a free-flowing goal machine, Sarri faces the same challenge again at a Juve side which is known for nothing but stubborn and pragmatic football. In fact, you could reasonably claim that the Italian Giants have not had an offensive-minded coach since 2001 when Carlo Ancelotti left the club. And Sarri is the most ideological manager in world football. In his three seasons at the helm of Napoli, the club ranked first for shots twice and second once, ranked first for possession all three times and topped the league for pass accuracy every year too. The side was built on relentless passing, defending in the Barcelona style by never giving up the ball, with the top four spots in the Serie A for passes per game occupied in all three seasons by Napoli players. Juventus are, of course, no slouches on the ball. The Turin side have tallied over 55% possession over the last four campaigns and never dipped below 85% pass accuracy, better than Klopp's Liverpool in the 18-19 season. But while Jorginho completes around 100 passes a match, Juve Regista Pjanic, the most prolific pass in the team, is at 63, meaning he'll need to up his distribution under Sarri, even if he has Adrian Rabiot to help him out. But it's probably for the best that the old lady is shaken out of her old habits. During the first leg of Juve's Champions League quarter-final against Ajax, Juventus found themselves at 1-1 at the beginning of the second half and did what they always do, rely on their defence to get them out with the draw. But dropping off didn't work, with Allegri's team giving up 60% possession and 19 shots, with the XG over two legs ending up at 3.3 for the Dutch side and just 1.4 for Juve, resulting in an embarrassing exit. When your team the size of Juventus, with the problem the size of this one, it's not time to find a plan B, it's time for a new plan A. And whether Juve can right the ship and maintain their dominance in Italy will come down to how effectively and how quickly Sarri can implement his style. 4. Find an Allen For all the focus on Jorginho, the player who made Sarri's Napoli team work was Allen, and the Italians struggled to fill that void in his Chelsea side this year. Kante could provide the defensive work, but not the attacking output. Meanwhile, Kovacic had the ball progression, but not the consistency. And as a result, Sarri spent most of the season struggling to find a working balance in the centre of the park. The best candidate for the role at Juventus is Emre Chan, with Ramsey seemingly a good fit for Hamzik's old position and Pjanic or possibly Rabiot well suited for Jorginho's job. Like Allen, Chan had excellent defensive numbers in the 2018-19 season, winning the ball back 4.6 times a game for the Bayern Canary, the best at the club. But he wasn't simply a destroyer, also ranking 5th in the squad for dribbles completed per 90 minutes with 1.3, an almost identical output to the Napoli man, and distributing the ball well too, with 2.9 long balls a game to Allen's 3.6 and one chance created to Allen's 1.2. However, as usual, the German struggled with his fitness, missing 10 games to illness and injury, and that could have been a concern in a roster relying on Aaron Ramsey's dodgy hamstring and 30-year-old Matuidi who despite his decline in physicality, was the fourth most used player at the Juventus Stadium. The bossman acquisition of Adrian Rabiot looks set to bolster the ranks, but while the Frenchman is an excellent defender, it seems a waste to relegate a player who ranked as the best midfielder ball progressor in Europe last year to a shuttling role, when he might make a better replacement for Pjanic, who is now 29. So, a cheap reinforcement could be Atletico Madrid's Thomas Partey. The versatile Ghanaian is now 26 but made over 30 appearances in the top flight for just the second time in 2018-19. A strong and intelligent defensive presence, Partey wins the ball five times a game and uses that same strength and anticipation to burst forward himself, completing 1.6 take-ons a match with an outstanding 86% success rate. Like Chan and Allen, he completes nearly 60 passes and three long balls a game, creates one chance and best of all, he's available for just 50 million euros this summer thanks to a release clause in his contract. The rare combination of experience and affordability, Partey would ensure that Sarri's silky football is reinforced with steel. 3. Turn over the back line. Having lost an average of three league games a season over the last eight years and conceded an average of 24 goals per campaign in that time, Juve's defence is rightly revered as one of the best in the world. Bonucci, Barzagli and Chiellini have been the mainstays, but the club have also wrung the last drops of talent out of veterans like Evra and Dani Alves, starting the Champions League final in 2017 with five defenders aged 26, 30, 32, 34 and 36, not to mention a 39-year-old in goal. Since then, Buffon and Barzagli have left, but Bonucci and Chiellini remain central to the Juve rearguard, ranking 3rd and 10th in the side for minutes played in the 2018-19 season. 
In fact, the lack of squad turnover is an issue everywhere. With 8 of the 10 most used players last year, 28 or older, and Juve squad, while rated the most valuable in Italy, also the joint oldest with Inter Milan. And in defence, the deterioration in quality is becoming more and more obvious. Juve conceded nearly 12 shots per game in Serie A in the most recent season, more than Leicester did in the Premier League. And that represents a massive decline from the three previous years, when the old lady only allowed between 8 and 9 opposition attempts. As a result, they conceded 30 league goals for the first time since 2010, and they could have been even worse off, with XG suggesting that they should have let in 35, 20% more than in any other season under Allegri. Continue to play Asian stars is mortgaging the future in favour of the present, and it's already come with a heavy cost. In an exchange for bringing Bonucci back to Turin after a year-long break at Milan, Juve let 25-year-old Mattia Cardaro move in the other direction, and Rugani continues to be one for the future, despite approaching his 25th birthday this summer. The centre-back failed to earn 1,500 league minutes in 2018-19 for the third time in four years at Juve, and has made fewer appearances in that time than he did in a two-year loan spell at Empoli as a youngster. With rumours of dissatisfaction in the camp already, Juventus could struggle to attract young talent at the exact time they need it, if they refuse to share game time around. Sarri will need to find a way to make Juve's defence impregnable again, and do it while saying goodbye to some of its greatest ever members. 2. Make Dybala the star Just as Allen was arguably more important to Sarri's Napoli than the more celebrated Jorginho, so Insigne was the true superstar attacker, even if his numbers were overshadowed by those of Mertens. In Sarri's three seasons at the Stadio San Paolo, Insigne missed just three league games, and in that time he contributed 68 goals and assists, or one every 127 minutes. In that time, Insigne averaged an insane 4.7 shots, 1.8 dribbles, and 2.5 chances created per game, with an expected goals contribution of 0.6 per 90 minutes. That is better than Eden Hazard's output in his final year with Chelsea when he played with the same role for Sarri. So filling that position in the Juve attack will be crucial, and fortunately, the Bayern Canary has a perfect man sitting on their bench in the form of Paolo Dybala. The Argentinian had a poor 2018-19 campaign, recording under three shots per game for the first time in the last five years and managing just 0.33 expected goals and assists per 90, the worst of his career so far. That's almost half of his previous weaker season, while his nine actual goal contributions is exactly half of his total for 16-17, his worst campaign before Ronaldo arrived. Building a team around the former Real Madrid man clearly cost Dybala, but he retains the talent to play almost any attacking role, combining outstanding passing skill with great dribbling and an eye for goal. Overall, the 25-year-old averaged 2.5 chances created and 50 passes per match across his spell with Juve. That is huge numbers for an attacker, and he can even distribute in a deeper role, putting up five long balls a game last season, with a whopping 83% accuracy. Capable of driving forward with the ball at his feet too, Dybala completed two dribbles each match last year, the lowest since he turned 20, but he's still the second best at the club. And like Insigne, he is happy to take on shots from almost anywhere, generating 4.4 shots per 90 in 17-18 and netting 22 league goals, making him unpredictable for defenders in the final third. If Juve can keep hold of Jao Cancelo, the fullback can provide whip as Dybala cuts inside, much as Gulam did for Insigne in Naples. This leaves the former Palermo player free to be the fulcrum of Sarri's attack orientated system. Though linked with moves to Atletico Madrid, Barcelona, Bayern Munich, and Manchester United, Dybala should be the most important player at the Juventus Stadium next season, even if it means sidelining Cristiano Ronaldo. 1. Make the difference in Europe. At this point, it's no secret that Juve are desperate for the Champions League. The Bayern Canary have gone 23 years without adding to their two European crowns, despite making three finals in that time. Having carefully balanced the books since their relegation to the second tier in 2006, the club splashed out on 90 million euros on Gonzalo Higuain in 2016 in a bid to break their duck, before going one step further in 2018 with the acquisition of UCL specialist Cristiano Ronaldo, only to exit at the quarter-final stage exactly the same point as the season before. And even before that dismissal, at the hands of Ajax, the old lady suffered humiliating losses to Atletico Madrid, Man United and Swiss outfit Young Boys. This was the first time they had lost four games in the competition since they returned to it in 2012, while Ronaldo's six goals in nine appearances meant he failed to reach double figures in Europe's biggest tournament for the first time since 2011. The money spent on Ronaldo was a short-term investment, intending to rid the club of a continental hoodoo, but despite playing 44 matches in all competitions, the same number as in 2017-18, Ronaldo's goal tally dropped from 44 to 28, a worrying sign in a 33-year-old. So getting the best out of his Galactico centre forward will be vital to Sarri meeting his target, especially as the Italian lacks continental pedigree. He has managed just 14 games in the UCL, losing half of them, while Allegri had coached over 30 before taking the Juve job, 
leaving Turin in 2019 with 86 games in the competition, a record bettered by only eight men. And in Sarri's single year at Chelsea, his predictable substitutions and refusal to switch up formation or style saw the team suffer some brutal losses, especially in the 6-0 defeat to Man City, and the coach was booed by his own fans after making his favourite swap of Loftus-Cheek for Kovacic in the 4-0 loss to Bournemouth. With domestic glory all but guaranteed, it is in Europe that Sarri's success or failure will be measured, and for all his flair and idealism, it will take the managerial cunning to carry Juventus over the club game's biggest hurdle at last. We'll see whether he's up to the task. So that was five ways Sari can rebuild Juventus. If we've missed anything out or you have any suggestions, get them down in the comments below. And as always, like and subscribe.